Once the photo merge for your HDR photos is completed, it's time to start editing these photos. We want to move from the library module to the develop module. This gives us a nice big view of the photo that we want to edit. In the last video, we flagged the stacked photos. The reason we did that is so that we can hide them during the editing process. We're only going to be working with the HDR photos. So to clean up the workspace, we can hide these stacks. To do that, come here to this filter drop-down menu and select flagged. You'll notice that everything has disappeared. No worries, we just need to click on this flag here to bring everything back. Then we'll click on the filter based on flag status button here. Now you can see that all of those stacked photos that we flagged are hidden. We're now only dealing with the merged HDR photos. One thing that's really helpful in the editing process is presets. You can create your own presets for different types of rooms. Here on the left side, you can see I've created some presets. Presets are settings that I've saved for a particular type of photo. So I have presets for aerial photos, exterior photos, and interior photos. The settings include things like exposure, color temperature, highlights, shadows, etc. Having these presets saves me a lot of time. Let me show you how to create a preset with the current settings we have. You just come here to the preset panel and click on this plus sign. Click create preset. Now you can choose which attributes you want to include in this preset. I select everything except transform, then name your preset. We'll just call this preset test, then click create. Now you can see that the preset has been added to the list of user presets. You can see that I have a few here for bedrooms and bathrooms and other types of environments. If I hover over one of the presets, it will give me a preview of what that filter looks like on my photo. These presets typically get me about 80% of the way there, and then I'll still need to tweak some things. On the right side of the screen, you have different panels for editing. First is your basic panel, where you can change things like white balance, exposure, highlights, shadows, and saturation. All of this is done by clicking and dragging these sliders. You can see as I move the color temperature slider, the photo changes. Same thing with the tint, exposure, highlights, and shadows. Feel free to mess around with all of these functions to see what kind of changes they make to your photos. The transform panel is where you can adjust the lines in your photo. You can move things vertically or horizontally, and you can rotate the photo. If you happen to move one of the sliders in the transform panel and you didn't like the result, you can either hit Command Z on your keyboard on a Mac, or you can double click on the slider and it will go back to its neutral position. Since I've created some presets, let me show you how I would go about editing this photo. I'll click on my interior preset, then I would come here to the transform panel. If I click on the auto button, Lightroom will try to adjust the lines so they look straighter and more even. This doesn't always work, but it looks like it's adjusted the lines in this photo so they look a little better. Another way you can adjust each of these tools is by clicking the numbers next to the slider and using your up down arrows on your keyboard. I found that this helps me be more precise in the changes that I make. You can see that as I use my arrow keys there are slight adjustments being made to the color temperature. I know that these closet doors are white so once I can make those doors white, all of the other colors in the photo should fall into place. We also have this HSL panel. Under the saturation section, you can use these sliders to get rid of colors that may be bleeding into your photo that you don't want. For example, on the right side of the closet door, there is a bluish tint that I want to get rid of. As I adjust the blue saturation slider up and down, you can see the changes to the closet door and the window. I'm fine with taking some of the blue out of the window as well. So you can see see that the closet door looks more white. Just be careful when using the HSL saturation slider. You don't want to remove colors that are meant to be there. For example, if the walls were painted blue, you wouldn't want to use the blue slider because that would change the color of the walls. So just be aware of what you're changing in each picture. I'll adjust a few more things like the exposure and color temperature until I think it looks good. Once I'm done editing that photo, I'll copy its settings by hitting Command C on my keyboard and a dialog box will appear with all the settings from this photo. I'll copy everything except local adjustments, transform, spot removal, and crop. The reason I don't copy those settings over to the next photo is because those settings are very specific to a particular photo. 
For example, if I were to use the transform panel to fix the lines of a particular photo, the next photo I edit may not need that specific adjustment, so I leave those out. Once those settings are copied, I'll move to the next photo and hit Command V on my keyboard to paste the settings. Now this starts me off in a good spot. I'll only need to adjust a few things in this photo and then move on. I'm trying to be as efficient as I can when editing these photos. If I have three or four shoots in a day, that can turn into a long night of editing. So speed is the name of the game for me. With that being said, you don't want to sacrifice your quality. Editing will certainly take you longer when you're first starting out, but you'll get faster the more you do it. So a few quick adjustments here, color temperature, tint, exposure, transform, and that looks pretty good. Moving on to the kitchen. If you remember from the job shadow video, I took shots with this trash can in the photo and then I moved it and retook the shot. I don't really need this photo anymore, so I can hit delete on my keyboard and then click remove or hit the enter key. This will remove the photo from Lightroom, but it won't delete the original or HDR files. Now, instead of pasting the same settings from the bathroom, I'm going to start with my interior preset because we're in a different area of the house with different lighting. So I think it's probably going to be better just to start with the preset. I'll make similar adjustments. You'll notice that I only use a handful of tools in Lightroom. I usually bring my highlights all the way down and my shadows all the way up. Then it's just a matter of white balance, exposure, and straight lines. Once I'm happy with how this looks, I'll copy the settings and paste them into the next kitchen photo. Another tool you can play with is the adjustment brush tool. This is where you can paint over a certain area and make adjustments wherever you paint. For example, this door on the left looks really bright, so I'm gonna try to bring the exposure down only in that section of the photo. Once I click and drag around the area I wanna change, I can start making those adjustments here. I don't use this tool a lot, but sometimes it can be helpful. In this photo, I can see that my camera person and their camera is reflected in the refrigerator. We want to try to avoid that when we're shooting, but sometimes it happens. So for this, I want to use the spot removal tool. It's similar to the clone tool in Photoshop. Once I have the spot removal tool selected, I'll paint over what I want removed. Lightroom will try to find a spot in the photo to clone this area. Sometimes it does a good job, but sometimes you have to move its selection. So I'll click and drag to a new spot on the fridge to see if I can at least get rid of that reflection. And I'll do the same thing with the camera reflection. And when I zoom back out, it looks pretty good. The spot removal tool works better on smaller objects, and we'll talk more about the spot removal tool in another video. Sometimes Lightroom can't merge photos to create the HDR because one of the photos is blurry. This happens when the camera doesn't focus properly. Properly. You can see here that this photo is blurry, so I'll have to do my best to edit the other photo without creating the HDR. Because this is a raw photo, it still has a lot of information, which will allow us to make a pretty good looking photo. I'm using a lot of the same tools that I used while editing the other photos. Once that's done, I can remove the blurry photo. Let's jump ahead to the master bedroom and edit this photo from scratch. This time, I won't use a preset. I'll adjust each setting until I think it looks good. The first thing I'll do is bring the highlights all all the way down and bring the shadows all the way up. I'll put the whites, blacks, and vibrance to zero. Then I'll work on the exposure and color temperature. This is starting to look pretty good. If I come over to the interior preset to preview what that would look like, you can see that the colors are quite a bit different. You can also see a difference in the bend of the photo. There is a little bit of lens distortion when you're shooting on a wide angle lens. To fix this, you can come to lens correction and click enable profile correction. Lightroom typically can recognize the type of lens you used to take these photos and adjusts accordingly. I make sure this is checked on every single one of my photos. I have it as part of all my presets. Now we can look at some exterior photos. Editing exteriors is a very similar process. I have a preset for exteriors and then I'll adjust the colors and exposure. Once it looks good, I'll copy and paste the settings just like before. With this photo, the house looks a little tilted, so I'll spend some time adjusting the lines in the transform panel. Same thing with this photo. I will use the transform panel to fix these lines on the house. One thing to make sure you do when you're using the transform panel is make sure the constraint crop box is checked. Otherwise, you'll end up with a photo that looks like this. You want Lightroom to crop out that empty space. From here, I would finish editing all of these photos using the same process. Once all the photos are edited, it's time to export. Please feel free to let me know if you have any questions and remember, keep shooting. Swish.